It's past 3 o'clock in the morning, so let's talk about the death of Murad Idrissi. This was originally written by Tommy Wairinga and then was translated from the Dutch by Sam Garrett. It's been long listed for this year's Man Booker International Prize 2019. Generally, I think it is a successful tactic for authors to go from the outside in when it comes to opening their novels. This book takes that to an extreme and in its first section recounts an entire nautical history of the Strait of Gibraltar. Ultimately, I don't think that that section did much for this novel. This book is 100 pages. Seven of those pages are dedicated to this opening. When 7% of your novel is dedicated to a biblical to contemporary span of history regarding a specific passage of a body of water, I would like to think that thematically we would recount it. I would like to think that this book in some way would relate to that global scale and that huge passage of time. But we're given this history and then it's dropped. If the point of that opening was to put this particular and very specific string of events in relation to that history, I suppose that it successfully set it up as what is happening now. However, because of the limited length of this book, we got trapped in the now, and it was inconsequential to have set it up in such a way. It's bland, vague juxtaposition. It's juxtaposition to make the reader do all of the work in explaining why this passage of history, this, this span of time, and these current events are related. And really, the only reason why they're related textually is because it is the area where this text takes place. We could have just had a picture of a map of the Strait of Gibraltar and I feel like we would have as an audience gleaned as much necessary information as that opening provided. I know I'm harping on this but I find it weak to have this grandiose platform on which you put a tiny speck of dust of a story and if in some way the author referred to that or commented on that, how this is an isolated event in that grand history, I would have been more impressed, but he does absolutely nothing to tie it all back in together, and again, as I said, makes the reader do all the work. This book also does contain bouts of lazy writing, or perhaps lazy translation, I'm not sure. I do know that when it comes to translating idioms, translators can often run into a snag, where they don't necessarily want to lose the integrity of the original language by using a different idiom, but perhaps to use the exact translation of an idiom, it would make the intended phrase not idiomatic. And if the point is just to be idiomatic, it's often more times successful to replace an idiom with another language's idiom, so that we as readers can just keep reading. The makings of a good translation is one where we as readers don't have to pause and try to understand the use of language as part of translation. So when I have a lengthy nautical history followed by the placement of characters on a body of water, why do I then have a metaphor of a character and another character being on unfamiliar ground? Unfamiliar ground. Now this is extremely nitpicky, but I have to wonder, as a reader, in the original Dutch, was unfamiliar ground used as the metaphor, as the idiom? In which case, I find that to be lazy writing. You probably could have easily found a water metaphor to keep us aloft in what is a very water-inclined world that you've built. Or did this Dutch idiom just not translate well into English and the translator chose to use the phrase unfamiliar ground? And in which case, that's seems like lazy translating. I just, I, that, what, what I'm talking about is, is way too specific. But again, this novel is 100 pages. In a 100 page short fiction, economy of language is more necessary than ever. And so for me as a reader to be pulled out of the text because of a ground metaphor, I, I just think is, I just think is something to note. This book also just forgets the use of punctuation and how it's intended to be used and is supposed to, I believe, be read in a very oral and conversational style, but instead just feels stilted and useless because we get period after period ending sentences that aren't sentences. We get fragments framed as sentences, and those fragments aren't really imbued with anything extra special to make us feel like they deserve to be their own sentence. And so what we get is just like hard to read text. This book was hard to read because no editor or translator or author cared about grammar. For example, chapter two, Al Hasiras, period. The ship nears the harbor tucked back into the bay. 
period. Container wharves, freighters, period. The vast Spanish land behind, period. Cranes poke into the electric blue sky, period. From the trip over, Ilum remembers the nerve-wracking swarm in the passenger terminal, the chaos there, the gates of Africa, period. That's how this text reads, if you read it literally. Here's how I think it's supposed to sound. Algeciras. The ship nears the harbor, tucked back into the bay. Container wharves, freighters, the vast Spanish land behind. Cranes poke into the electric blue sky. From the trip over, Ilum remembers the nerve-wracking swarm in the passenger terminal, the chaos there, the gates of Africa. I don't have the time to tone out a dramatic reading of poetry in what is stilted prose. And so this 100-page novel took me far too long to finish. I think it's supposed to be wistful, I think it's supposed to be left hanging, and instead of ellipses, which is what would make that happen as grammar insinuates, we get periods at least use commas. Or edit the text so that it is basically like long-form poetry. I feel like that would have been far more interesting to read, because then those fragments would be better justified as sections of text to spend more time with. I think that the subject matter of this novel is something that actively needs to be talked about. I think that there were elements of the plot that I found completely thrilling, and this could have been probably a really good short story, but was for some reason drawn out into a short-form novel. It's not a novel. It doesn't work as a novel. It also doesn't work as a short story, and so we're trapped in a novella that's just clumsy. I'm actually very upset about this book because it was the one that I was probably most excited to read whenever I saw that the long list was announced, and um, I remain unenthused. I will leave this very negative review with a few positives. One, I did say that there were parts of this story that I did find thrilling. This does have a nice punchline effect to it, where the events that did unfold did make my heart race a little bit. I also thought that the dialogue was very nuanced. I felt like the way that the characters interacted with one another was well developed in what is a short span of time. In such a short amount of text, I did get a very realistic sense of who all of these people were. So those are my very sleepy thoughts on the death of Murat Idrissi. Comment down below if you plan on reading this book as part of the international long list or have read it already and tell me your thoughts. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon.